Here is your weekend. Chris Allen. This is New Center 4. Good evening. The a winter storm warning for tomorrow and tomorrow night. Now that worries a lot of people who flock to grocery stores trying to stock up before the snow gets here. Terry Lewis joins us live from one such store. Terry, how are the merchants holding up? Well, Carol, to give you some idea, standing behind me is somewhat of a lull, believe it or not. Most of the shoppers are still back in the aisle. What you're seeing here now is sort of the culmination of a day-long flurry of cautious consumers to stores in both Carolinas. Since early this morning, cashiers have been checking groceries nonstop. By late this afternoon, this Greenville supermarket had already tripled its normal business for Wednesday. I live alone, so, I, you know, I don't want to get stranded. I live up on Paris Mountain, and I know I'm going to be stuck. <laughs> and I was surprised. Almost all the bread is gone. I couldn't believe it. We had to resort to oat bread today. In fact, most shelves show the signs of the snow fear as anxious customers grabbed up all the staples they could find. Hammond Farms near Moonville stocked some grocers in the area. Workers here started early gearing up for the increased demand a snow threat creates on stores' normal egg inventory. We're delivering some stuff today that might not go till tomorrow or Friday because we're afraid we can't get out Friday. Not everyone who flocked to stores to stock up did so for fear of the snow. Some customers welcome the white stuff and are actually looking forward to being snowbound. Well, we live on Paris Mountain, so we definitely will not get out if it snows. Mm -hmm. And my husband is a dentist here in town, and if schools are out, he's out, and we have a family holiday. What are you picking up? Junk. <laughs> I have all the good stuff. This is all of the... Let's celebrate it snowing outside. Baking cookies, cakes, and all of the things that aren't good for you. You know, drugstores are also reporting an onslaught of customers. It seems a lot of elderly residents worry that if they're snowbound, they won't be able to get to their medication. Of course, that's very important. Terry, how about the merchants themselves? Are they well stocked? Do they expect another rush tomorrow? How are they doing? Well, they're telling me that the orders are in. At least they've told their distributors that they want more products, but they're worried that the distributors won't be able to get the products in if there's bad weather. So I guess we'll just have to see. Terry, we always hear that people are picking up bread and eggs and milk. What are the other items you see going through? Junk food, as the lady told you earlier. People are picking up things like marshmallows and hot chocolate and those kind of things. Things you like to have around when it's cold outside. Oh, good yeah, idea. If you have pets, it might be a good idea to get some doggy food, too. Mm -hmm. All right. Charlie Gertz has been telling us the snow is coming. He's here now with more specifics. Charlie? Well, at least this is the most advanced warning we've had on any major occurrence of snow and freezing precipitation in the upstate for some time. And a lot of you out there have been had plenty of time to get prepared. And those preparations you are making right now are certainly well warranted because snow is definitely on the way. We've already issued a winter storm watch now for the entire state of North Carolina. The mountains of North Carolina will get the heaviest snow. And a winter storm warning is in fact rare that we'd have a winter storm warning in effect for the upstate of South Carolina so far in advance without even having a watch out ahead of it. But actually, we should consider us ourselves in a watch position now with a winter storm warning across the upstate on over to the northern counties for tomorrow. Now, that's for Thursday. A winter storm watch is also up across the Midlands all the way to the coast for all practical purposes and for north central Georgia right on up to the Tennessee border. Snow is falling over in Tennessee, northern Mississippi. The entire state of Arkansas has had up to four inches of snow already. The storm system itself is well to the west of us, but a situation we call overrunning, that is warm, moist air overrunning this Arctic dome of high pressure that has moved into the area, is what's going to occur. We may see a few flakes of snow tonight before it uh, gets a little bit heavier as we approach midday tomorrow, then continues into late tomorrow, changing over to the worst of all weather conditions, freezing rain on Friday. Carol? Thank you, Charlie. Road and highway crews are getting ready for hazardous driving conditions on area roads. Crews in Greenville County hooked up eight snow plows and motor graders and loaded up sand spreaders in anticipation of icy roads. A spokesman for the county says crews will be on call overnight in case the snow comes early. In Spartanburg County, a highway department spokesman says we're as ready as we can be for the expected snow. Sand spreaders and snow plows are ready to roll when the roads get rough. Even the Highway Patrol put winter tires on their cars to make travel easier. While road crews gear up for hazardous driving conditions, social service agencies are also busy trying to help keep families warm through the winter storm. In Greenville, Shares Operation Warmth delivered firewood to needy families. Shares Weatherization Director says he's had lots of donations of free firewood, 
but he doesn't have enough volunteers to help collect and deliver it. If you'd like to volunteer or you need help, you can call the share office. Severe weather conditions also raise questions about public transportation. The Greenville Transit Authority says it will do all it can to keep buses rolling during the bad weather, but if GTA is forced to close or change routes, we'll let you know. A house fire that started near a chimney claimed the life of a six-year-old Pickens County boy and sent five other people to the hospital. In Pickens County, Sheriff's Department says Jason Ledford died of asphyxiation. The fire broke out at the Branion family home near Six Mile at about 1.30 this morning. The rest of the family was treated for smoke inhalation and all but one have been released from the hospital. The Sheriff's Department says foul play is not suspected. Carol, a boarding house burned early today in Augusta, Georgia, killing four people there. It appears a space heater turned up high, caught fire, and spread to the building itself. Several residents in the boarding house jumped from second floor windows to safety, but the charred remains of an elderly couple and two other people were found in the rubble after the fire was put out. It's believed to have started in a ground floor apartment. The winter storm is blamed for at least 22 other deaths now across the Midwest all the way to the eastern seaboard. This is the third day that the storm has held a large part of the nation in its clutches. A dozen cities recorded record low temperatures this morning, 12 above in New York, that was a record, 14 below in Chicago tied the record, and in Embarrass, Minnesota, Embarrass, Minnesota, the thermometer fell off the wall at 37 degrees below zero. Ooh, many of the area's homeless make their way to shelters tonight, but what do the homeless do when the shelters close during the day? Rod Whiting found out by spending part of the day with one of our homeless in Asheville. The hardest part of the day is during the daytime. Tell you, you ain't got nowhere to go, you have to go to library somewhere to stay warm. I tell you, it's rough, man. God, no, it ain't getting no better, neither. I tell you, whew, it's got to be a better way. Rick Matthews is one of more than 100 homeless who are trying to find shelter from the cold here in Asheville. Like Rick says, the daytime is a hard time. The shelters are closed. He's on the streets, trying to blend in, even trying to become invisible. Well, in order to become invisible, you, you panhandle a little bit, and you have to stay moving. Uh, you go to a cafe and order a quarter cup of coffee, uh, but you have to stay moving all of the time. For many of the homeless, the nighttime is often their best time. In shelters, they eat a free meal, sleep in a warm bed, certain for now they're out of the cold. But in the morning, they find warmth in a restaurant, the mall, even the library. Yes, I go to that Catholic church tonight, try to get me a bed or something. Yeah. I was lucky last night getting the Salvation Army. I don't know about the night. I had to sleep on the street. You know? Rick hopes to have a place of his own one day, but for now, he's only thinking about tonight. It's got to get better. You know? Governor Martin ordered 101 National Guard armories in 74 North Carolina counties to stay open 24 hours. People who use those shelters do need to bring a blanket. Shelters for the homeless in the upstate of South Carolina report mixed reactions to the cold snap so far. The Havens of Rest Ministries in Anderson had 23 guests last night, so many that some had to sleep on couches in the chapel. Greenville's rescue mission housed close to 100 men, women, and children, and also reported using its chapel for housing. But the Salvation Army in Greenville reported 22 of its 70 beds were empty last night. All three shelters say they expect the numbers to increase as precipitation moves into our area. In this cold, a 37-year-old mentally retarded woman is missing, and the Greenville police want your help in finding her. Catherine E. Matthews was last seen on December 31st on Cool Springs Road. Miss Matthews was wearing a gold-colored T-shirt, blue jeans, and white tennis shoes. Relatives say Miss Matthews has wandered off before and once ended up in Georgia. She is on medication and has her medication with her. If you have any information, please call the Greenville Police Department. And coming up later on our newscast, do your children have Social Security cards yet? You may run into a long line. And Pat Robertson's wife says if her husband is elected president, he'll cancel the White House subscription to the Washington Post. I'm Jim Wogan, the legend of Pistol Pete Maravich and how it began in upstate South Carolina. The great rebates of 88 are happening now at your Carolina Ford dealer, but only for a limited time. Get a $500 rebate on Ford F-Series trucks, the number one selling trucks in the world. Add a factory option package that includes free factory air and save over $2,600. Or get a $500 rebate on Ford Ranger, the number one selling compact pickup in America. Then save over $1,800 when you add an option package. But it all ends soon. The great rebates of 88. Get your Carolina Ford dealer's best deal today.
when my wife found out that Long John Silvers is offering four Norman Rockwell mugs for the holidays for just 99 cents a piece, who do you think was first in line? Bingo. This holiday season, come in for your Rockwell mugs and get another great classic. Long John Silvers shrimp, fish, and chicken dinner for the low holiday price of just $3.99. And uh, don't forget your mugs. You need insurance that pays what Medicare doesn't. I know. You want the company that returns more of your premium and benefits than any other? Of course. Well, this national report from the General Accounting Office proves that Blue Cross does. Well, I'm not surprised. Get your 65 plan now, with no questions about your health. Well, what about claims? None to file. Only Blue Cross. Do you have Blue Cross? Call 1-800-444-0030. What parents can do about the rise of children dialing phone sex numbers on the next Oprah Winfrey Show. The Oprah Winfrey Show, 5 p.m. Thursday on Your Friend 4. The sudden, mysterious death of basketball star Pete Maravich on the basketball court yesterday sent a shockwave through a growing community of health enthusiasts. Pistol Pete painted a picture of perfect health. How could it happen? Well, early speculation indicates a heart attack. As Judy Fleming reports, if you plan to be more active in the new year, get the facts first. Don't you just hate the holidays? A couple of weeks of partying and you feel like a real blimp. Be tough, get fit, tone up, and live longer is the message, but the means to that end may spell disaster. Seven, eight, take it down and up. Aerobics is one of the more dangerous sports. Ironically, this excellent cardiovascular workout is too much for many. Nick says he's always looking for warning signs by maintaining constant communication. If you don't hear a response, then we know something's wrong. And that's when we have to start taking the level of aerobics down a little bit lower. But sometimes there is no warning. A heart disease called silent ischemia is becoming more prevalent among the active. They have no chest pain, no angina of any sort, yet they do have heart blockage in there that could cause problems later on or even sudden death. Experts speculate that this is the illness that left marvelous Pete Maravich dead on the basketball court in a pickup game. He was 40 years old and in better health than most of these guys. At the Y, this is a typical lunch hour crowd, and are they worried? Well, it doesn't bother me, and I've been playing this way for 17, 18 years. Whether it's pumping iron or pounding the pavement, fitness is more than a trend. But can these daytime pencil pushers handle the physical pressure, or more appropriately, can their bodies? And for the part-time athlete, how far is too far? Most doctors agree that the answer to that can only be found in the body of the beholder. In Greenville, Judy Fleming, News Center 4. Silent ischemia is the same illness that killed Jim Fix, the famous runner. Doctors say the only way to detect this disease is through a stress test, Carl. Mm -hmm. Get the facts and find out. I suppose mm -hmm. might save yourself something. Scientists at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore have developed a tiny thermometer that swallowed like a pill to measure the body's internal temperature. It's a battery-operated transmitter that sends information back outside. Doctors say it's especially important in emergency cases where patients have been exposed to extreme heat or extreme cold. Georgia Governor Joe Frank Harris says he'll push for a comprehensive AIDS bill when the legislature meets there later this month. The governor's proposal would impose criminal penalties on people who knowingly spread the disease and would require testing of all new state prison inmates. The bill also would allow doctors to disclose to a person's spouse that he or she has tested positive for AIDS and it would require licensing officials to give information about AIDS to couples seeking marriage licenses. Charleston moves closer to a smoking policy. County Council gave tentative approval to a law prohibiting smoking in county buildings, except in designated areas. Some council members denounced a lobbying effort by smoking supporters. One councilman said he received 33 mail grams from people asking that the ordinance be rejected. The Tobacco Institute denied it initiated the mailings, but said individual companies sometimes send letters with their viewpoint. South Carolina lawmakers consider one alcohol issue so far this year, but it is a controversial issue. The Dram Shop Bill holds owners of businesses that sell alcohol liable if an underage or drunken patron buys alcohol at the business then hurts or maims someone. The bill requires $300,000 in liability insurance each. Restaurant and bar owners disagree. They say the consumer should be held responsible. A 64-year-old Greenville man will not go to prison, not go to prison, despite pleading guilty today to criminal sexual conduct with a minor. 
Hank Wigington Jr. pleaded guilty to performing oral sex on a 15-year-old boy back in 1981. Bill Oglesby reports. A former corporate pilot for J.P. Stevens, Hank Wigington Jr. was accused of sodomizing a teenage boy on four or five occasions in 1981. Authorities arrested Wigington last September after seizing child pornography and other evidence from the home of 61-year-old Thomas Holland Jr. Among the items seized were videotapes from out of state that authorities believe Wigington had a role in obtaining. They were secured when Holland was up visiting Mr. Wigington in his apartment in New York. Um, so the logical conclusion may be that certainly Mr. Wigington knew what was going on. Holland is serving a 70-year sentence arising out of his guilty plea to sex charges involving young boys. Wigington's attorney today called his client's participation an isolated act and an aberration that involved only two youngsters out of many who were questioned in the Holland case. The lawyer, Chip Price, added that both victims are now well-adjusted adults who bear no apparent psychological scars. Calling it a tragic situation, Judge Frank Epps suspended a 20-year prison term, sentencing Wigington to five years probation with mental health counseling. Quite frankly, I thought that Mr. Wigington would uh, go to jail at least for a little while. On the other hand, I, it's not my job to send this up to the judge, and I never question what the judge sentences a person to. Judge Epps closed with a warning to Wigington to stay away from young people in the future. But this may not close the book on evidence seized in the Thomas Holland case. Solicitor Watson says an investigation is continuing and there is still a possibility additional charges will be brought against other individuals. In Greenville, Bill Oglesby, New Center 4. Character witnesses today said they've known Wigington for years and consider him an honorable man. Well, Carl, if I wagered, I'd wager that people are talking about the weather tonight. Uh -huh. Not too many of them are doing much about it, though, <laughs> are they? Getting ready for it, I That's guess. That's right, and Charlie will have the forecast next. If you never forgot VE Day, if you still feel proud of how we all pull together, then you'll always remember the songs we dance to romance too. Now they're back in a great new album that'll make you feel good again wherever you are today. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Would you like to swing on a star? Carry moonbeams home in a jar. Stage Door Canteen. Four giant records. 44 hits from Bing to the Andrews Sisters. Guaranteed to put the sing back in your swing. And they said we better have She rave a positive healing. Negative. Pardon me, boy. Is that the Chattanooga Juju? Yes, yes. The stars at night are big and bright. Deep in the heart of Texas. All the memories, the magic. Of goodbye. These were our times, our songs. Now all the original versions are captured forever in this four record collection. Kiss me once and kiss me twice and kiss me once again. It seems to me I've heard that song before. Drinking rum and coke. 44 songs, four big records in Stage Door Canteen. But remember, it's not sold in stores. Stay tuned to order now. To order, call toll-free 1-800-367-2400 to save all COD charges and pay only $19.98 plus $3 shipping and handling for four records or three long-playing cassettes. Use your credit card or send check or money order to Stage Door Canteen, P.O. Box 1566, Greenville, South Carolina. Remember to save all COD charges and to Stage Door Canteen, P.O. Box 1566, Greenville, South Carolina. Yes! Oh, oh, oh. Don't you just hate the holidays? A couple of weeks of partying and you feel like a real blimp. Even your ankles got fat. It's enough to make you want to give up. But that's when you gotta get tough. 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 Join Holiday Health Club at 87 rates and pay nothing for 30 days. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. North Carolina disaster officials say the number of shell fishermen asking for help still ahead of expected levels. Today marked the second day of a week-long campaign to help out the devastated fishing industry. Emergency management officials are holding mobile disaster centers for the rest of the week. So far, more than 300 people have signed up for help. Most of those people have asked to apply for a small business administration loans. 
and the Salvation Army and community action programs have given more than $5,000 so far to help pay bills. Thousands of people near Pittsburgh are going through another day without tap water because of a diesel oil spill in the Monongahela and Ohio rivers. A one million gallon tank of diesel collapsed on the weekend, spilling its contents. Water companies downstream stopped pumping from the rivers until they're cleaned up. The cold weather has slowed the spread of the oil some, but it's expected far down as Wheeling, West Virginia sometime tomorrow. The chairman of the oil company that owns the collapsed tank says his firm will pay the entire cost of the cleanup. What brings joy to children, dismay to their parents, and abject sorrow to power linemen? Well, the answer, of course, is a forecast for ice and snow. But if weather does cause downed power lines in the coming hours, local utility workers are prepared. Nambang says more on what you can do to make their job easier. Long before reports of ice and snow come in, Duke Power's operations center starts planning. Planning for the worst. Every service truck is equipped with tire chains, and every customer service employee knows that he or she may be in for double shifts in the hours ahead. During adverse weather, we utilize all of our people, whether it's answering the phones in the office or acting as guides uh, out uh, for out-of-town crews. Uh, so we use most all of our employees during major storm situations. If you have a weather emergency during non-business hours, chances are your call to Duke Power will come in here at the Winwood Operations Center. The service representative will take your information and then dispatch a truck from one of the radios back here. If you call in and get a busy signal, keep trying. If you get a recording, just stay on the line. Someone will answer your call. In widespread outages, the orders for work are handled by a central computer. Once you talk to a service representative, you don't need to call back. Putting in a second call about the same problem simply ties up the lines. These people know it's uncomfortable, dangerous, even frightening to be alone without power in a winter storm. But they want customers to know that every resource available will be called in to correct power outages, and employees will continue working overtime until every house is back online. In Greenville, Nan Banks, News Center 4. And one other thing, we always urge people not to drive in bad weather because it's dangerous. Power companies, however, also want to keep you off the road because abandoned cars often block their trucks from getting to down power lines. One other, one other thing, we have our first school closure because of the coming weather. The South Carolina School for the Deaf and Blind in Spartanburg closing tonight, putting its people on buses right now and sending them home throughout the state of South Carolina. They'll be there sometime later tonight. And, of course, we'll keep folks up to date on school closings, if there are any. Sure. Probably will be, won't there, Charlie? I would certainly think so. I hope so. I, hope yeah. I bet your phone's been hard. ringing today, huh? All day. That's what the people do when you give that four-letter word on the air, you know, <laughs> around here. And I know those kids are going to be out there all night. No one's going to sleep looking up at the skies for snow. Sure. You may see that big halo around the moon tonight. Conditions are shaping up nicely. We have a nice cirrus overcast and a full moon. And uh, very possibly one of the old-time forecasters that we all know, the moon and the ring around it, can uh, let us know it's really coming. What time do you think the snow will start falling in earnest? In okay, I've got a, a, a lot of good ideas on this. I believe before the night is over, we will get some light snow. Very possibly tomorrow morning, just some light intermittent snow. You're not going to go with the 1047 or anything? No, I'm going for 312 tomorrow, <laughs> afternoon. tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, 312 or 1512, as you military men out there know. I believe the snow was set in in earnest could be heavy at times, accumulations in the local area, four or five inches, and then uh, mm. the worst weather of all, as warmer air moves in aloft tomorrow night and on into Friday, many areas will get freezing rain and sleet. There's no doubt about it, it's on the way, much of the nation is already getting it from a storm that is yet way over in Colorado, but a little surface wave now has developed around Brownsville, Texas, it's not a deep wave of low pressure or a major low pressure system, but there is going to be enough overrunning warm moist air against this Arctic air mass to give us what we've all waited for, that's a good snow in the upstate. 31 degrees at 6 o'clock this evening under cloudy skies. The high only got to 34 this afternoon, and the morning low was 23. Now, the humidity is still responding to the Arctic air mass. It's relatively dry, 35% at the surface. And this is one of the more dangerous things with a situation like this because that moist air aloft will move over it and fall down through the very, very dry, cold air. This will form the snow and the freezing rain, ultimately. Barometer quite high, 30.44 inches of mercury holding steady. May get a little bit higher before it starts tapering off tomorrow. Surface winds are from the southeast at five miles per hour. They should continue to be from an easterly quadrant, drawing around to the northeast with time tomorrow, possibly at times from the southeast, 
we, we develop a trough of low pressure over the southern mountains. No precipitation yet, but uh, I think by the time you talk to Mike tomorrow, or Mike talks to you tomorrow at noon, we can put a little figure in there. Up in the mountains this hour, skies are cloudy. It is cold. Asheville already down to 25. Their high this afternoon was a warm 27. Look at the morning low in Asheville, 14 degrees, and there were spots in the higher mountains that were down as low as zero to five above. Let's go to the northeastern part of the country first, and then we'll get to what we're really concerned about, and that is the local area. A, a wind chill advisory continues for northeastern New York all the way up through Maine with gale force winds bringing wind chills as low as 50 degrees below zero. Very, very dangerous wind chill temperatures. Heavy snow squalls continue around the lee shores of Lakes Ontario, Erie, Huron, on up over Georgian Bay and uh, Lake Superior and Michigan. Northeastern Ohio has had heavy snow, bitterly cold air across the eastern part of the country. New York City this morning set a record low for the date at 9 degrees. And here comes trouble now. The major low with the system that's approaching is still out in Colorado. It's only dumped 29 inches of snow in the higher elevations of Colorado, 8 inches of snow across Kansas, 6 inches of snow in Oklahoma, 4 inches across the entire state of Arkansas, and then a band of freezing rain from southern Arkansas through northern Texas on over into southeastern New Mexico. Temperatures in the northern panhandle of Texas today, 14 degrees. That was their high, 15 degrees up in Kansas. And up in Ballantyne, Nebraska, the morning low, 22 degrees below zero. 37 degrees below zero this morning here on South Dakota, 29 below in the eastern part of Iowa, and 14 below in Chicago. So what we have now is a classic setup, the Arctic front rolling down through the Rocky Mountains. A little sympathy wave has already developed down around Brownsville, Texas. This will not develop into a major storm by storm concept for several days probably, but it's going to be enough to bring that Gulf air up over the Arctic air mass and give us what, as I said, the children certainly have been waiting for, and that is snow. Here's the way it looks now by way of satellite photography. Go first to the local picture. Yesterday we uh, talked about how it looked like a giant arrow pointing toward the east. You can see the tip of that arrow is getting ever closer to the Carolinas. They've had some snow in Georgia over in Cobb County this afternoon, although the Atlanta airport didn't report any. Indications of moisture aloft already in Alabama, moving into west central Georgia with heavier indications of precipitation starting in Louisiana. They have watches and warnings out for Louisiana too for freezing rain and snow and heavy precipitation is off the coast. So it looks like a pretty good uh, surefire thing that we're going to get an active winter storm. Moisture continues all the way across northern Mexico and southern Texas out to the Pacific. It'll be caught up in the overall flow and push right up over that cold dome of air as we explained. Here's the forecast for the remainder of tonight. Now, snow developing through the night. Now, what I'm looking for is a little light snow late tonight or in the early morning hours. I don't see anything that'll give us a problem by drive time tomorrow. Low temperature tonight, 22 to 25. Winds from the northeast at 7 to 10. Tomorrow, snow increasing in coverage and intensity in the afternoon. High temperature, 25 to 28, with winds from the northeast at 15 or 10 to 15. In the mountains tonight, snow developing also, the low 12 to 15, with northerly winds 7 to 10. Tomorrow, very possibly heavy snow in the mountains. High temperatures, 21 to 24, winds southeast at 10 to 15. Flying conditions through the period, of course, deteriorating in IFR due to dangerous icing and low clouds and snow. On the coast, sleet and rain, possibly some freezing rain mixed with snow, even on the immediate coast, with temperatures in the 30s tomorrow. And the look ahead, snow, I'm going for a maximum of about five inches locally, higher in the mountains, then turning to sleet and freezing rain Friday. Lows will average 20 <coughs> through the period, afternoon highs at around the 30 degree mark. Our Charlie said it would umbrella winner tonight, Laurie Dreyer of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Carol. Well, maybe it should be a shovel tonight. Thanks, Charlie. The wind chill factor dipped down to 30 below zero off the Connecticut shore last night. Three divers spent the night in the water clinging to their capsized boat. It took 16 hours for the Coast Guard to find the men. The divers say they kept their mind off the cold by swapping shipwreck stories and arguing about pizza toppings. <laughs> the Greenville County Council is wasting no time looking for a successor to County Administrator Joel Mashburn. Just hours after Mashburn announced his resignation to take a similar position in Iredale County, North Carolina, the council set up a search committee to seek a new administrator. The search committee is made up of three Republican and three Democratic council members the committee is set to go over a job description for the post tomorrow, and one of its members, Council Chairman Man Batson, says he hopes to complete by the I month of March. A... a group of Japanese businessmen wants to talk to Clemson about locating a branch office for the University of Japan. University officials will meet with the group later this month, and while the idea is in the planning stages, there is talk of locating some professors and students from the Clemson campus in Japan. Some Japanese business leaders also want to hear how Clemson biotechnology research works. The latest chapter in the PTL saga is 
a request for more than a million dollars from the ministry by Jim and Tammy Baker. An attorney representing the Baker says they don't really want the money. What they really want is to go back and take charge of the ministry. They're asking for the funds in return for the lakefront parsonage in Tiga Cay. Attorney Ryan Hovis says even if they got the money, the Bakers probably would turn it over to the PTL to help pay, help pay the bills there. The current administrator of the ministry says he is amazed, he is shocked, and he's angered at the Bakers' request. Well, here's another one for the enough already category. Tax law changes strike again. Did you know that all dependents five years of age or older must have Social Security cards this year? It's all part of making sure everyone is properly identified and has a tax ID number. Tamara Thompson has more on cards for kids. There's a mad rush at Social Security offices everywhere. Just ask Jenny and Steve Hunt of Pickens. They've waited for an hour to get tax ID numbers or Social Security cards for their kids. The Internal Revenue says by April 15th, seven and a half to nine million taxpayer dependents must be enumerated. Here's why. To make sure that you, that the dependents you claim are your dependents, just like the thing you were talking about, divorced parents, both of them claiming the same kid. Without some identification on those kids, there's no way that you could check that they're not claiming to the same dependents twice or more times. Kids need Social Security cards for other reasons, too. To clarify citizenship or status, and to eliminate phony dependents. Some people have been known to claim FIDO on their taxes. Once you apply for a Social Security card for your child, there's a two to six week wait. And when you apply, proof of age and identity is required. If you also have a shop record, send that in along with the birth certificate. These documents will be mailed back to you. The IRS says if your child's Social Security number is missing on your return, they have the right to fine you. However, because the law is so new, this year only, it's waiving the $5 penalty. So come April 15th, if a number's missing, don't delay filing. Right on the return, applied for. It's not necessary that you actually come to the Social Security office to get a tax ID number for your child. You can apply by mail. In Greenville, Tamara Thompson, News Center 4. And Tamara has dry, a... powdery snow. This makes the second time in less than a year that a major storm hits our area. On January 22nd last year, 13 inches of snow fell in the upstate. In an average year, the upstate gets just two to three inches of snow. Good afternoon. Ken has the day off. Locally, we have 19 degrees and it continues to snow. Mike's been tracking the storm. He joins us now from the Weather Center with an update. Mike? Carol, we've been tracking the storm since late last week and conditions across the upstate right now are very treacherous. Heavy snowfalls across the western Carolinas and the northeastern Georgia. To the north of this white line, it's falling as snow. Eight inches in Asheville, North Georgia, Mountain City and Clayton, both eight inches. Hickory, seven, and Charlotte, five. Now, between the white line and this yellow line in central Georgia, it's falling as a mixture of sleet and freezing rain. As much as one to two inches of sleet have accumulated from Athens to Augusta. Freezing rain now in Charleston and Augusta. And south in Georgia, in the warmer air, it's just cold rain. So this freezing rain, the sleet line will slowly edge towards the upstate later this afternoon. We may have a mixture, but for the most part, forget it. Stay home and enjoy the snowstorm. We'll have more later on. Carol? Good advice, Mike. Thanks. A few flights made it out early this morning, but it looks like the Greenville-Spartanburg Airport will be closed for the rest of the day. Most major airlines have canceled their flights. John Culbertson is standing by live at the airport with an update. John, what can you tell us? Well, Carol, Eastern, Delta, and American have all canceled their flights here. We understand the Atlanta airport will be closed until about 4 o'clock. They'll make a further determination at that time. The Charlotte airport, uh, last we checked, had one air, uh, runway open but it was kind of marginal. It, too, may be closed by this time uh, that the show comes on the air. Uh, right now, uh, airport workers are still working trying to clear off runways. This morning, they tried desperately to battle the elements, but the elements have apparently won. As snow continued to blank at the airport, workers scraped the runways, de-iced planes, and about 8 o'clock, several flights actually made it off the ground. But most travelers were not as lucky. Should our plane leave Mars? The problem is, once you get in the air, there may not be a place to land. 
Mary McMillan was one day away from sunny Miami, but now she's stuck at the airport. Well, they say that the crew that's supposed to be able to clear the, uh, the planes and the runway are stuck at the Hyatt right now. And they say if they get back here and get it cleared, possibly in a couple of hours, we'll get out of here. I assume Miami's not snowed in. <laughs> no, thank goodness. Despite valid efforts by maintenance crews, the snow is just too persistent. Greenville Spartanburg will probably be closed for the rest of the day. Right now, it's really up to the snow. If it quits, then the, the airport workers can quickly go out and clear the runways and get things operational. But if this keeps up as it's going right now, it may be tomorrow or even later before the airport uh, opens operation again. All right. Thank you, John. We'll look for an update during the 6 o'clock news. And in the meantime, try to stay warm. People in Spartanburg are struggling through the snow, too. Mark Krua is in downtown Spartanburg now, but he's been out in the county checking out roads and power lines. Mark, what sort of problems have you found out there? Well, Carol, it may be pretty, but it's awfully cold and it's a whole lot of trouble for the people who have to be out today. The snow is driving right now. Traffic is, is slowed down to a crawl almost. The best place probably is the interstate, but even there, speeds are only 25 to 30 miles per hour. If you don't have chains, simply don't drive, or a four-wheel drive, don't drive. It's awfully slippery out here, and there are some drifts that are two feet tall in some cases. Surprisingly, no major accidents, and if you follow the advice of the highway patrol, the best thing to do is simply not drive at all. Road conditions are deteriorating rapidly in Spartanburg. Stalled cars are a common sight. Even law enforcement needs a helping hand once in a while. But as the saying goes, the mail must go through regardless of the weather. It's pretty rough right now, especially without chains on. If you don't have chains, I wouldn't even tip anything out here today. This bad. Visibility, especially on secondary roads, is extremely poor, but so far there have been no major accidents and no widespread power outages in Spartanburg County. Getting out, though, in the weather is tough for some people. Others seem to enjoy the snow. Yeah. Well, I'm a truck driver, and I drive in it all the time, except for a couple of years ago, and I love it. Crews are busy clearing roads in Spartanburg County, but with such a heavy snowfall, their work doesn't last long. This road behind me, which is... North Church Street in Spartanburg was cleared about three hours ago, and as you can see, the snow has piled up again, so it really doesn't last very long. We checked with uh, Cherokee County, Union County. They have no major problems, no major power outages. The Highway Patrol here in Spartanburg County says they've had a grand total of two fender benders since about 8 o'clock this morning, so really no accidents to report. The snow is dry. doesn't even make a good snowball, Carol. All right. Thank you, Mark. A good day to stay indoors. The storm brought activity in western North Carolina to a virtual standstill. Rod Whiting joins us with an update on conditions there. And Rod, how is Asheville holding up? Well, Carol, residents in this area are having little difficulty with their power, heat, and water supplies. So if you're inside, you're reasonably safe from the storm. And as you, as you mentioned, activity outside is at a near standstill in this area. But there are still some who see this storm as a chance to get out and play, and others who have to make the best of it. I'm just making sure the chains are all good and tight. It's done, he done checked the other side. We got two of us up here checking all the buses as they come in, make sure all the chains are tight. Bill Allen's one of many who are braving this cold, making sure these buses run safely. Some motorists aren't so lucky. Stranded cars dot the roads and highways in western North Carolina. These stranded cars are one of the biggest dangers driver David Hicks is facing. It's kind of rough. <laughs> Uh, one of the biggest problems we're having, of course, is where people are trying to get out and leaving cars stranded mm -hmm. on narrow roads, and, uh, mm -hmm. and that's giving us more difficulty than anything right now. What? Shelters around the area are open for anyone seeking warmth from the storm. Donna Lee Enbright found comfort at the Salvation Army. Oh, yes, I've been outside this morning since quarter to seven, and I just came in, and they let me in. They usually don't, but it was real nice of them to, and I really appreciate it. <laughs> As a blanket of snow covers downtown Asheville, pedestrians are walking with a quick and a pace. However, there are some who are finding fun in all of this. Well, it gets kind of, you know, you get kind of physically tired, but it pays off when you go down and you have fun. When you go inside, after all. For those kids, it's not too much fun for drivers. Road conditions around this area, as they are around the Greenville area, are quite hazardous, and some are saying even quite dangerous. So the word is, if you don't have to get on the roads, don't. 
Rod, we did most of our school closings this morning, but do you have any word on school closings in your area for tomorrow? Yes, we got a call just a short while ago. Buncombe County Schools will be closed tomorrow, so that will apply uh, for this area. All right, Rod, thank you very much. Now, despite the storm, some people have to get to work. Volunteers brought workers to area hospitals this morning, but hospitals face an even bigger problem, how to bring patients in. Judy Fleming joins us live with that part of the story. Judy? Carol, here at St. Francis Hospital, most doctors and nurses are at work preparing for what might be a busy day. Emergency rooms here, as well as at Greenville Memorial, are at full staff, but they're not seeing too much activity as of yet. The real emergency situation concerning health care officials today is the homebound, who are requiring medical assistance, home health care, hospice, and especially the dialysis patients, who must be maintained on these machines. Dialysis is more than a need, but it's a necessity. These are just some of the patients brought in today by police officers or emergency personnel. They're the ones that could not have survived until tomorrow. Most of the patients do not have kidney function um, or very limited kidney function. Um, all the food that they drink between each dialysis treatment causes them just to stay within their systems, in their tissues, causing many of the patients to go on congestive heart failure very easily. Um, it's very vital that they dialyze at least three times a week. This medical care is needed by hundreds of kidney victims across the upstate. Although centers such as this one have been preparing for the snow since last week, precautions have not been enough. By tomorrow, an emergency warning will be sent out to local community volunteers. Patients will have to get here. I have, I think, around 51 patients scheduled to be on dialysis tomorrow. Um, we are going to have to do everything possible to bring these pe people in. It's and that, of course, is Judy Fleming reporting from the Greenville Hospital System. The Red Cross could possibly use some help if you own a four-wheel drive vehicle and are available to help out in an emergency situation. They would really like to hear from you this afternoon. You can call this number in Greenville, 271-8222. That's 271-8222. The Red Cross is not sure yet if you would be needed, but they would like to get a list together should a situation arise. The Witten Center in Clinton needs to have all nurses, food service personnel, and mental retardation specialists to report to work if possible. Now, if you cannot get to work, please call the center for some transportation assistance. As you might guess, the number of businesses have canceled second and third shifts, and some schools have already made closing plans for tomorrow. Let's take a look at that list if we can right now. The community closings, Greenville County Library, its branches will be closed. The American Fast Print will be closed today and tomorrow. That, of course, in Spartanburg. The Piedmont Center for Mental Health and the Children's Medical Center, emergencies only. People's National Bank in Pickens and Easley closed. The Orchard Park Adult K -K Daycare is closed also. American Federal Banks in Greenville are closed. Anderson Social Security Office is closed. Clemson University, no afternoon classes. They did hold some this morning, but none this afternoon. Imperial Die Casting, no second shift. GTA buses will not run today. The House of Fabrics closed today and tomorrow. Stouffer Chemical in Anderson, no second or third shift. The Greenville Surgery Center is closed. Anchors One is closed. Medicus Opticians closed today and tomorrow. Carolina Plating closed today. Mako Auto Painting and Repair also closed. Chris Pugh's company closed today. James River Corporation in Simpsonville, and no second or third shifts. Carolina Steel, no second or third shifts. First Federal in Clemson, Greenville and Spartanburg closed. South Carolina Dental Association, ADPAC seminar in Columbia is canceled. Phyllis Wheatley Center and Child Day Care is closed. North Hills Medical Center closed. PPG Industries also closed today. Piedmont Center for Mental Health is closed. Mayfair Mills, Star closing at 8 o'clock. Montessori Education Center is closed. Junior Achievement of Greenville closed day and night. Pyramid Industries closed. Stobley Corporation of Spartanburg closed. Norton Chemical, no second shift. Steel Heddle, all shifts canceled. TNS Brass closed. Claim and Pleading and Stitching Company also closed. Gateway House closed. American Federal, all locations will not be open today. Stone Manufacturing closed all shifts. Carolina Blouse closed all shifts. Avondale Mills, Walhalla, Greenville County. Ariel Baptist Church in Greenville Mall closed. McAllister Square is closed. Span America closing at noon. They will reopen midnight tomorrow. Roadway Express 230 and 7 through 30 crews not working. Culp Rove and Velvets of Anderson closing. They will reopen on Friday at 3. 
Cherokee Vocation Center closed tonight and tomorrow night. McLaughlin Manufacturing, no second shift. Career Com College of Business, no night classes. Anderson County Library System, all branches are closed. Christie Pediatric Group, emergencies only. Greenville Free Medical Clinic closed tonight. Cranston Print Works in Fletcher, all shifts today and Friday cancel. Greenville Courthouse and Courts closed. Reliance Electrical Gear Plant closed second shift, third and a first on Friday. Bausch & Lomb, second and third shifts canceled. All Clinton Mills, Mount Vernon Dryer, Felt, and Simpsonville closed. Bonaire Fabrics of Greenville, Greenwood Mills, Liberty Plants closed. Reeves Brothers, Chesney and Woodruff, Infant Center, Greenville. No second and third shifts at the plant and the Infant Center is closed tomorrow. Springs Industry and Lyman Complex closed will resume Sunday at 11. WCU registration in Asheville postponed until Saturday. Cryovac plant in Duncan, First National Bank closed. Textube Corporation of Greer, Mayfair Mills, Thickens and Glenwood plants closed. Clark Schwabel Fiberglass Corporation and Jackson Mills Welford closed. Wilson Sporting Goods reopen second shift Friday. Mountain Birth Care Asheville closed tomorrow. And those are the closings. If your plant was not mentioned, please call your supervisor for further information. The weather here intensifies the fears of a Greenville family. They reported their 37-year-old mentally retarded daughter as missing on New Year's Eve. They still have not found her. Catherine E. Matthews was last seen on Cool Springs Road. She wore a gold-colored t-shirt, blue jeans. Cutting wind slick streets when you think winter think of the one you've been turning to for over eight years to handle the weather for you chief meteorologist charlie gertz only on new center four with carl clark and Ned estes clearly we're here for you vinnie del negro scored 20 points 13 in the second half to lead north carolina state to a 70 to 61 victory over clemson last night Charles Shackelford added 14 and a game-high 11 rebounds for the Wolfpack. Jerry Pryor led Clemson's scoreboard with 15 points. The Wolfpack came from 10 points behind with 13 minutes to go to take the win, improving their record to 8-2. Clemson's record drops to 7-3. and three. Here's a very busy guy today. Running around. <laughs> Must be doing something important outside. It, it is. And now it was eight inches, and that continues to grow. Right. It? It's been accumulating uh, average uh, accumulations, about an inch per hour through the morning across the western Carolinas. More on the way. The uh, most uh, respectable thing about the storm is that uh, the temperature, it's just so cold and hard to believe that we're in South Carolina, and it's 19 degrees in the middle of the day. That's about... Uh, 30 degrees below average for this time of the year. 19 so far is the low today. And the high yesterday afternoon was a comparatively balmy 34. Humidity right now is at 92%. We're looking at the Greenville Spartanburg Airport, which uh, is no surprise to most of us is shut down. Barometer still rising, very cold air sitting in here at the surface. And that moisture is overrunning the cold air at the surface and creating the heavy snowfall. Winds northeast at 17. The wind chill factor now in the uh, upstate is 8 below zero. That's the coldest wind chill so far this winter. And officially 8 inches at the airport as of uh, 1130 this morning. In the mountains of western North Carolina, snow is flying 15 at noon. 15 coldest so far. It's been actually dropping across the Carolinas since it started snowing about 3 to 4 o'clock this morning. 27 yesterday afternoon. And the wind chill in Asheville right now is 11 below zero. Temperatures across the entire state of South Carolina remain below freezing. Charleston now freezing rain in 29. Sleet from Columbia to Florence. In fact, a band of sleet and freezing rain from the Midlands into central Georgia. Macon freezing rain in 29. Athens sleet in 22. Heavy snow in Knoxville. And heavy snowfalls already across the western Carolinas and eastern Tennessee and north uh, eastern Georgia. Mountain City and Toccoa, 8 inches. Some of the higher peaks, nearly a foot of snow. The southern mountains in western North Carolina have seen up to 10 inches of snow. Now, south of this line, some accumulation of snow, sleet, and freezing rain, but really uh, not much to talk about. So uh, it looks like most of the snow will remain in the upstate this afternoon. And in southern Georgia, just a cold rain, but Macon does have freezing rain last hour. Here's the expanse of the storm. Moisture feeding out of the Gulf of Mexico ahead of a low pressure system down around the mouth of the Mississippi River. And it's overrunning the cooler air at the surface. The center of the high is over Virginia, and that's feeding in the very cold air, which is running against the mountains and then getting funneled south and westward. So we're sitting here and looking good for more snow this afternoon. However, that uh, freezing rain and sleet line is edging ever so closely to the upstate. Some of you folks in the lower counties, I know around Newberry and Greenwood, will not see as much snow as we're seeing up here. 
But certainly, later tonight, as the evening progresses, we may change over to sleet and freezing rain in the Greenville-Spartanburg area. But plenty of precipitation headed up the coast towards the northeast tomorrow. Out west, a lot of cloud cover, but not much in the way of any rain or snow. A little bit of rain reported this morning in northern California. Temperatures in the southwest, very mild. They were cold a couple weeks ago. Remember that 60s now in southern California and Arizona. And the very cold air across uh, the Great Lakes into the southeast teens poking their ways down all the way down into the upstate of South Carolina. Temperatures remaining in the single numbers. That's a little bit better. It had been below zero the past couple of afternoons in the upper Midwest. Florida, the place to go if you can get there, but with the airport shut down, it's not going to be very easy. 70s around Miami this afternoon. Friday's weather map, the storm heads up the coast. Precipitation should taper off later tonight in the form of flurries, and uh, will be slow to clear out tomorrow. But with all the snow cover around, the sun's energy will be used in melting the snow, so it doesn't look like a very warm day tomorrow, although we will probably break freezing in the upstate, the plains, and southwest sunshine, more rain and snow in the northwest. Forecast for the rest of this afternoon, a winter storm warning remains in effect across the western Carolinas. Snow heavy at times, and highs 20 to 23. In the lower counties, you'll see a mixture of sleet and freezing rain. More snow tonight, possibly changing to sleet and freezing rain. Total accumulations, 6 to 12 inches, lows 20 to 23. Temperatures will probably rise later tonight. And on Friday, partial clearing a little bit warmer. Maybe we can melt some of the snow off the roads, but uh, not much. Highs tomorrow, 36 to 39. In the mountains this afternoon, a winter storm morning continues. More snow accumulations, total accumulations anywhere from a foot to a foot and a half. That snow will taper to flurries tonight, 15 to 20. And tomorrow, mostly cloudy, and then turning partly cloudy in the afternoon. I think the sun will eventually break through highs 30 to 35. Aviation interest, dangerous IFR with the icing problems in the mid-levels of the clouds. The beach forecast, sleet and freezing rain today, but clearing and cool tomorrow with highs about 45. So the big one is here, Elizabeth, but it ends later tonight. 30s tomorrow, the sun breaks through. Now over the weekend, we have another disturbance moving along the Gulf Coast. We're going to have to watch it very carefully. Right now, we'll just call for a lot of clouds. It'll be cool, temperatures around 40, and Monday, sunshine, and into the 40s. And we, of course, will follow the storm through the afternoon. Charlie, Very cold air, so we suspect that places like Raleigh and Greensboro and Danville, Virginia, and on up toward Richmond, we suspect you'll see quite a bit in the way of snow accumulation during the afternoon hours. As we said, I-85, very, very treacherous from Charlotte into Greenville with about as much snow as you ever see from a snowstorm. Even Chattanooga, Tennessee, almost 10 inches of snow on the ground incredible amounts of snow and that's what happens when you have a tremendous amount of cold air and warm air aloft. A warm air aloft is so far north that it's actually snowing around Cincinnati, Lexington, Kentucky, about one inch of snow right now and the northern edge of the snow seems to be right around the Decatur, the Peoria area of Illinois, but this is just a dusting of light snow. The heavy duty stuff is still, still to the south in parts of Tennessee and as we move back into Missouri, a few snow showers as far north as Kirksville, but again, that is the northern extent of the precipitation. Now in the upper Midwest, temperatures are still well below zero from Wisconsin on into the Dakotas and it looks like that trend is going to continue. 